Ernestine's Milky Way. I wrote this story. My name is Carrie Madden Lunsford, and Emily Sutton drew the pictures. And Olive is going to listen. Deep in the hills and hollers of Maggie Valley, where the sun rose over an old rock house, lived Ernestine, her mama, and their cow, Old Peg. Daddy was off in the war, so it was up to Mama and Ernestine to keep the farm running. Every morning, Ernestine hollered out her window to the Great Smoky Mountains. I'm five years old and a big girl. Then, rain or shine, she and Mama would head off to the barn to milk Old Peg. Later, Mama ladled the creamy milk into her tea and dr dr drizzled it over Ernestine's oatmeal. They kept the extra milk cold in mason jars inside the gurgling spring house off the kitchen. At bedtime, when Mama heated milk on the old wood stove, she'd say to Ernestine, I'm the Big Dipper and you're the Little Dipper, and way over in Germany, Daddy sees the same stars we do up there in the Milky Way. Then Mama would pat her big belly, and maybe by the time Daddy comes home, the twins will already be crawling. When even a drop of milk spilled, Mama said, why look, it's our own Milky Way. Then they'd cuddle under quilts telling stories of stars, constellations, and wandering planets. One day, Mama said, Ernestine, I need you to do a job for me. Mrs. Maddie Ramsey, who rents the shanty house down yonder, needs milk for her children's breakfast. Their daddy's gone off to war, too. You want me to carry old Peg's milk all the way to the Ramseys? I'd do it myself, darling, but Dr. Fairchild says I gotta stick close to home with these babies coming. Ernestine jumped on top of the milk pail and stuck her chest out. I can do it, Mama. It won't be easy, Mama warned. You'll have to walk through thickets of crab apple and blackberry by the creek, down the path of prickly gooseberry and honeysuckle, past the vines of climbing bittersweet, into the valley of dog hobble and devil's walking stick, and through the barbed wire fence. I can do it, Mama, Ernestine repeated. She climbed down off the milk pail and whispered, I'm five years old and a big girl. But did Ernestine tremble a little when she spoke the words? Next morning, Mama bundled Ernestine up in her blue coat and woolen scarf. She handed her two mason jars of milk with the lid screwed on tight. See Venus shining up there, she said. That's the morning star. It'll light your path as the sun comes up. And so Ernestine set off in the silent dawn beneath a lavender sky. She carried the jars in an old feed sack close to her heart while the mountains slept like giant elephants under a scattering of stars. Just as Ernestine entered the thicket of crabapple and blackberry, she heard a snuff a snuff a snuffling along the path. Could it be a lone wolf rustling up a breakfast of berries? But it was only a family of sleepy skunks trundling single file along the creek's edge on their way home for an early morning nap. I'm five years old and a big girl, said Ernestine, tightrope walking across a gnarled log. When Ernestine reached the path of prickly gooseberry and honeysuckle, she heard a fearsome grunta, grunta, grunta in the brush. Could it be a passel of sleek panthers with glistening fangs? But it was only a cluster of whistle pigs rooting up a snack of dandelions. I'm five years old and a big girl, called Ernestine, stomping down a trail of crunchy acorns and witch hazel. As the sky turned pink above the vines of climbing bittersweet, the mockingbirds chirped. Soon Ernestine found herself in the valley of green dog hobble and devil's walking stick, where she heard a mighty big something of scratch a scratch a scratching up a tree. Could it be a great black bear with claws sharp as swords? But it was only a ring of baby raccoons practicing tree climbing with their mamas. I'm five years old and a big girl, yelled Ernestine, ducking as she carefully climbed through the barbed wire fence. What a relief to feel the buttery sunshine on her face. But then one of the milk jars slipped from the old feed sack and rolled down the path. She watched it bounce, spin, and twirl as she chased after it, still holding the other jar close to her heart. Over and over it went, pell-mell, down, down, down into the holler. Ernestine scooted, stretched, and straddled to catch that runaway jar of milk. But it vanished without a trace. Mrs. Rent. Mrs. Maddie Ramsey sat on the step rocking babies as Ernestine made her way up to her shanty, blinking back tears. 
Howdy, Ernestine, Mrs. Ramsey said. You got something there, baby? Breathless, Ernestine held up one jar. I brought you two jars of milk from our cow, Old Peg. Only I dropped one, and now it's lost forever. Ernestine tried not to sniffle as the children kept as children kept appearing from every which way. An old lady called from a window, Breakfast, y'all kids, get in here! Mrs. Ramsey answered, Come in, Aunt Bertie. Then she turned to Ernestine, Never mind, child, please eat breakfast with us. So Ernestine went into the kitchen with all the children, and they poured old Peg's milk on their steaming bowls of oatmeal. Suddenly, the oldest boy, Jimmy, appeared in the doorway, holding up something muddy and covered with leaves. Hey, y'all, look what I found in the creek. And there was the other mason jar, which must have spun so fast down the mountain, landing with a plop in the icy water that the milk had churned into butter. Everybody cheered as they spread butter on slices of cornbread. And Aunt Bertie sang, Lordy, I can't remember the last time I tasted real butter. Thank you, Ernestine. You're a big girl and a good neighbor. When Ernestine arrived home with two empty mason jars, Mama kissed her head, hugged her tight, and said, I'm proud of you, darling. You're my big girl. And every day after that, Ernestine toted two mason jars of old Peg's milk to the Ramsey family, through the thickets of crabapple and blackberry, down the path of prickly gooseberry and honeysuckle, past the vines of climbing bittersweet, into the valley of dog hobble and devil's walking stick, and through the barbed wire fence because she was five years old and a big girl. And that's what neighbors do. That's Ernestine.